motion to order. Um, all those who can, please rise to say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank all right, perfect. So, uh, approval of minutes. Bill, you want to walk us through? Um, I think the minutes were just the, the the public hearing, right? Yes, that's correct. Yep. So. Well, actually, you know what, George? Do we still have the last time we met? Was it that we only had three and we didn't approve those minutes? You didn't have a quorum. Right. So the, July the, minutes. No, they would have been. September minutes? Oh my gosh. Well, but I don't have them on your agenda and I don't, okay. I don't have them prepped, but I'll do that next time. Okay. I think I so. We I probably. We're about, so we. Between between not having the quorum and then going to the public hearing. Right. So they would have been from like September yeah. probably or whatever. So, okay. Yeah. I'm just thinking about that now. Okay. Oh, I have these. Yeah. So I went, Amanda and I went over the, um, those, those minutes pretty good. So. The only thing that I saw was public well, hearing. on line 56. Okay. It would be trap rock, not track rock. It oh. is trap rock, yes, that's right. Okay. What's that, 50? 56. Yep. yep. Yeah, got it. So trap yeah. with a P? Yes. Okay. Yep. <clears throat> I thought you did a great job with them. I mean, it, they, it, they were synthesized well, and Thank you. it's hard to, you know, sometimes it's hard to mm -hmm. hear everybody, so. All right. For That's the only one I saw. Four zeros. Four zeros. And yeah. check box. I guess do it four ones. Powered. It doesn't have to go. <laughs> okay. There we go. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, did you get a, I was I was helping him. Did you get a motion? Did you approve the amendments? Well, does anybody have any other? Do you want it? That that was the only one I saw. I mean, you guys reviewed them before. Reviewed did anybody? Them, uh, yeah. No comments. Okay. Yeah. All right. So just with that, so do I have a motion to approve the minutes with the line fifty six correction? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All, right. All those in favor of aye. A, say aye. Aye. So aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? Okay, the motion passes unanimously. All right, so we have new business, referrals. We've got two referrals in front of you tonight. Um, one is particularly familiar. Uh, I think the first one we have is the ZC2336, which is Zoning Text Amendment to Prevent Mobile Food Vendors. This, um, this is an item that you had reviewed previously. Uh, but when it got through the zoning commission process in review, the, the commission decided to withdraw the original uh, text amendment. And that, remember, that text amendment uh, would, al would have allowed mobile vendors only at locations uh, that had a, an occupied food and beverage business. So they, they, with, they chose to withdraw that with a little bit of a change in direction, I, I would suggest. Um, and then have drafted a, a new text amendment that will go to public hearing next week that would allow mobile food vendors at any occupied commercial location. So they, 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 they took out the limitation um, that would only allow it at food and beverage locations. So the draft... And it could be any food so, truck from anybody. It's not necessarily businesses in town. Could be any. That's correct. Okay. That's yep. that's how it's drafted today. Yep. Now, I mean, I would say we, we, we they, they did hear hear um, from quite a robust contingent of, of restaurant owners in town that are quite concerned about it, and I expect they'll hear from them at the public hearing. Uh, again, your job is to find whether the draft text amendment is consistent with your POCD, uh, but you can certainly make recommendations. Uh, the, the POCD certainly, and it's in the economic development section, is, is supportive of, of 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 new business, but it also talks about you know, preserving and supporting existing business. So, so the original, the original, if I remember correctly, it was if they had restaurants here, right? Or, no, or no, businesses. No, or, or it, all, all it said was a food truck could only locate 
where there was a restaurant or bar. So it could have been somebody from It could have been somebody out of town, yes. But again, the, the thinking for, of the Zoning Commission at that time, I want to speak for them, was at least that property owner who owned the restaurant would, would be, be okay, okay with, yeah. with, with that particular food truck or not. But so in this case, they have they've removed it. And so the... Um, Whatever, the stop and shop could, could could have one at their location or um, right the tractor supply or right here at UConn Health. Um, so the only the only the only place um, how should I say this? The text amendment only applies to town wide, does not apply to uh, center zone. So it wouldn't be permitted downtown. Oh. It does not, it does not oh. apply to the center's so, own properties, okay. only townwide, so outside of ours. Oh, anywhere outside the center. Yeah, that's right. Hey, George, sorry to interrupt. Um, what's the password again? Oh, zero, 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 four zeros and a check. Thank you. So any business, doesn't matter from outside of town or anything, can come in and with a food truck? They just don't, they don't need to have a connection with... They, they do not. Now, what they have to have is um, they have to have approval of the property owner. They have to go through a permitting process um, uh, with, through zoning administration. They can't displace existing uh, existing minimum parking requirements. Have to have clear drive, you know, access, and you know, can't hurt the health, public health, safety, and welfare. And what's the reasoning for excluding the center of town? Just non compete. I think it was the the, the um, it was the sense that the the, the, the the center zone is designed for walk, you know, walkable, walkable businesses, and you know, you've got you know existing core of 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 restaurant uses in in the center, and that there's a concern about competition there as well. Is Iron Horse part of center zone? It is. It is. And again, and this doesn't um, this doesn't negate. Special public events, or carnivals, or fairs, or public gatherings—they they would always be permitted, at kind of as a one-off at those kinds of events. Right. Yeah. So I can see why businesses, restaurants <coughs> in town, would be, Absolutely. yeah, concerned. But hmm. the zoning commission has had a lot of, you know, we've had they've, they've had this discussion in multiple meetings. You can kind of sense that it's it's a complicated issue for them. They withdrew it and, and kind of initiated it. Second look, there was some changeover on, on the zoning commission as well. We had two new members that kind of how, how we responded to the first referral. I thought we gave them a positive. You referral. gave a positive recommendation upon upon a finding. It was um, you know, support uh, supported economic development. We didn't give any. It did not caveat it. No. It did not. And this is when it was just like if we wanted to if a if if a, I don't know the wing bear had a oh, it would had their own food truck correct. Okay, and now it's yeah. Joe's Taco Truck can. Joe's Taco Truck could go to the tractor supply. Okay. As long as it didn't take away, like you said, it didn't take away as long as all of that stuff. Right. That's right. And again, it'll go to public hearing next week. I'm just trying to think of how. In what circumstance, like how often it would happen? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's the yeah. you know it's special event kind of thing. Well, it do, but it doesn't preclude special events. George was just saying. So, so right here's a good now, example. So special here's events. A, anybody, any food truck could come in, right? And so this is here's a good uh, 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 dispositive example. So, it was a Chick Fil A truck that was locating at the tractor supply every Wednesday from eleven to one. Kind of that kind of we can get a complaint from business owners that it's not permitted, but it's, and so so in that case they wanted the tractor supply wanted to have Chick Fil A every Wednesday from eleven to one. Okay. Just as an example of kind of the yeah, timeliness and how often and you know uh, did, um, did we have a huge amount of demand associated with people calling us? Can we have food trucks? No, but, but I, I don't know whether that makes any difference. Remember we had we permitted. By accessory use and site plan, the food truck at Millwright's the zoning commission did because the zoning commission found that that was essentially a semi-permanent 
I mean, it was just part of the site. It wasn't it wasn't driving in and driving out and driving in and driving out. It's there from it's there from May to October essentially. So it's, we, it's treated a little bit differently under the zoning. So this this really does allow the, the mobile truck to go at, you know to go to Fitzgerald's on a Wednesday. But this would benefit places like um, the collective, who has trucks there mm -hmm. that could have any. I mean, they. It would particularly, particularly, you know, bars who have events and those types of things. They're not permitted to do it today. Uh, yeah, this would allow that. Yes. Yeah, but it would also allow. I mean, I know you said you stop and shop to have a food truck every Wednesday or Thursday, and then Tractor Supply is the Chick Fil A truck on a Wednesday. And then somebody else says, oh, you know, this is this is pretty cool. And I own a something something business. I own a shoe business and I'm going to have food truck Mondays and offer discounts on my shoes. And then pretty soon, I think these existing restaurants who've, who've been in town and have paid taxes and have put their sweat equity into improving their business and made it through the pandemic and all that sweat equity, and then they see their lunch crowds dwindle because somebody's having a deal on shoes on Monday and Stop and Shop has, you know, um, whatever, and then Tractor Supply has, you know, their their Chick-fil-A Wednesday. I think it's, I, I, it's, 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 it's almost as if we're robbing Peter to pay Paul. I mean, the way I see it, the way I'm looking at it. Um, and I think, you know, I, I, if I had a business, I'd, I know I'd, I'd be concerned about that, where, um, like I said, I've put all the sweat equity in, you know, I've got employees, all of that stuff, and people are depending on that paycheck. And then, you know, a food truck from Glastonbury or Hartford or some big corporation like Chick-fil-A who, you know, just has food trucks around, mm -hmm. comes into town and... You know, my lunch crowd is, well, Tuesdays they're way down, but, you know, um, so I think I think that's concerning. And I think it, um, um, while, yes, we're, you know, the POCD supports business development, um, I don't, to me, business development's a bit more permanent than a food truck. Yeah, I would, um, I would just, I would just offer this, um, and maybe, it may, maybe it's helpful, if you, if you look at the current POCD. In, in section 9.1, it, it offers uh, a diversity of, of, of kind of action items or, or objectives. Uh, Simsbury will maintain positive relationships with local businesses. Simsbury will re retain existing businesses and support their growth and expansion in Simsbury. Simsbury will seek to attract new businesses to Simsbury. Uh, Simsbury will support the startup of new enterprises in Simsbury. So that's that's what your POCD says today. Right. So it, it says a couple of different things, frankly. Well, I I I agree. Yeah. It says a couple of different things, but that to me is more permanent than a food truck that comes into town on Tuesdays and leaves. You know, they're there from eleven to two, serving tacos, and then they leave, and then another one comes in on a Thursday, and I don't know whatever they serve. You know, it's the it's the grilled cheese food yeah. truck. Yep. You know, um, and meanwhile, you've got places like Harvest and Benny's and other places around that are here paying taxes and supporting the community the way they can. Um, you know, so something impermanent like a food truck rolling in and out, I don't, to me, I, you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm mistaken, but to me, that's not promoting new business. That's just allowing a business to come into town, do their thing and take off and go to another town and do it another day. You know, Joe, I, I, I think you make a good point. I think on the flip side of that, though, you could consider just like, for example, say Neckers. Let's suppose they wanted, you know, a, a truck to come in and park in their parking lot. And I hadn't even thought about this until someone else said, but, but, you know, perhaps they promote, you know, 10% off on toys on the day the truck's there. It's, it's not adding new business, but it's helping that existing business perhaps attract more business because of the additional feature of the food truck. So, you know, I can see it your way too. I mean, I, um, yeah, I, they, there's, um, I hear what you're saying, but I, I think the fact that 
they have to have the right setting. You know, they, they can't just park it anywhere. They can't take up, like George was saying, parking space. I mean, they, there are certain parameters. Um, I don't know. Would that be a way also to attract a food truck that might be looking for a permanent home? Who knows? Um, mm-hmm. And it's usually such um, a, a niche truck, mm-hmm. you know, like tacos. Well, not every place in town. You know what I mean? So I... While it might take away from some restaurants on, you know, like Chick-fil-A, I guess, on a Wednesday, um, is it, like Craig said, attracting people to go there and maybe look around at other places right near there? I don't know. It's, it's, it's you know, it's hard to well, yeah, say. I mean, I don't it's, argue it might not attract people, but, you know, it's, it's kind of like squeezing a water balloon. So you've got the food truck and you squeeze it this way and there's a big bulge here, but it's yeah. not a big bulge down here, you know. Yeah. And I mean, at, you know, at what price, you know, another, I mean, at what price would we, would we want these food trucks coming in? It may, may attract them to track tractors. I know we keep saying tractors of life, but any business at the price of, you know, one of our established restaurants. So, um, you know, I find that, uh, as I said, concerning and, and I can certainly yeah. understand why, um, the restaurant owners and mm. are extremely concerned about it and as am I I think it's just um, I think it's sort of a I don't know a problem looking for a solution more than anything so Joe do you have yeah, some alternative that. wording or you know something we can put in the referral I, you know we gave a positive referral on the first one I mean we, we you know we were comfortable with that. Um, and I could say, yeah, I mean, you know, because we used to go to the food truck at um, Mill Rights. Mill Rights. Mill Rights, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, because that was there and we knew it would be there from May through the end of August. And, yeah. you know, we could go there and we, we sat and we'd, we'd order some drinks or whatever. And, you know, um, you know, that to me is one thing. So, I mean, you know, if yeah. one of the established restaurants, ABC restaurant, I don't want to keep using names, but you know, says, oh, you know, we're going to do the same kind of thing. I, I could see that attracting some business. Right. And, you know, and the, they're like, we don't serve tacos, but we're going to have a taco truck. Right. But that you know, business is getting value fair. from it. Mm-hmm. They're getting value from it. I'm right. also looking at um, uh, 9-1 um, and section, uh, uh, section A, and it says, encourage economic development that is consistent with the POCD and harmonizes with lo- some various locational val- advantages, the natural environment, and surrounding structures and uses. And now we've got two vacant restaurant buildings right down the street here. Um, and do we want to promote, I, I mean, the, you know, mobile food trucks are going to compete with any, any, any business that, you know, that's, got, that's occupying buildings. So do we want, do we want to uh, create an environment where, which, is more con- which is conducive to more buildings being vacant, more restaurants going out of business? I think to Joe's maybe, point about maybe as a group you were, you were satisfied with the with the first set of language that limited it to, to restaurants and food and bed. Maybe maybe, yeah. maybe you're not satisfied with the expansion of it. Maybe yeah. maybe that's yeah. where it sounds like you might be. I think this broadens it to um, something that um, mm-hmm. is, is uh, counter to um, mm-hmm. what we're trying to do and, uh, with, with the POCD. I was looking for something that would be contrary to the POCD, and I think uh, Joe's convinced me to dig a little deeper here, and, and I think this this is clearly contrary to uh, economic development. How no, we consider like a cap? Time. You're right, they're not staying. Yeah. I mean, you know, because I, got, I, I think that could be either. something you could recommend as part of your referral to the to the, to the to the commission, but that's... Because I'm agreeing, because I, I, I like the, the idea of... of allowing mm-hmm. more business but I don't want all of the money to leave the ecosystem of the town so it's like if I, I'm fine with it to an extent I just don't want 30 food trucks and now we have you know the pizza place on the street is struggling on Tuesday mornings because of mm-hmm. that conflict yeah. I think as a body if you had consensus you could recommend uh, the, the the text amendment or the, the, the zoning commission consider you know, a, a maximum cap on total number. That, I think that's a that's that's also reasonable. 
total number per just just total number of permits issued on an annual basis or something like that. I don't, I don't I, I'd have to I don't know what that looks like. I'd have to think about that. So you go back to the whole genesis of this discussion was non-conforming activities. Yeah, it was. Right. It was exactly. And <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards no food trucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I don't want to say no. Like, so, I mean, like no, I, I know. Know. So you're there, and then you would, then you know, then I, I think you would make a finding that it. it's not you know that the, the amendment is not consistent with the POCD because it harms existing yeah. businesses or something like that. I don't want to put words in your mouth. I just don't understand how. You gave, I, and I get it, we give positive referrals so they can do what they want. We gave a positive referral on something that was very specific, very controllable, very contained, and then we get this um, text amendment or proposed text amendment, which is like, you know, just open the gate. And I don't mean open the gate so that, you know, you could have one in my driveway, but what I mean is now it's like, as long as you're in, you know, the various zones, B1, et cetera, et cetera, you can just have a food truck there. I mean, that's that to me is, is I don't, like when I read through this, I just didn't get why we're even looking at it because that's not what we said the first time. The first time we were like, hey, man, fine, you know what, I get it. This is very limited in scope. Uh, someone, you know, like the damage is going to be, if any, very, very containable and very controllable and we have it all in this box. And then we're giving something which is saying, you know what, we're going to take this box all apart and, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. do that. And, I, you know, that to me is, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. yeah. But know, I'll that. go a step further and say we, we, we've, we, we approved something that was perceived to generate value right. for existing businesses. Good. And now we're looking at something that is going to decrease, uh, is going to con detract from um, right. local business. Yeah. Well, so it, it may attract... Detract from some and attract to others. Yeah. Is the point. So well, you could just get a motion on the floor and hammer it out that way. It's usually the best way to do it. But you want us to uh, you know look at this through the lens of the POCD and whether it's it's consistent with our with That's our, that's the process. expectation of, of the referral process, yes. Could this food truck end up in a location that could cause like issues with traffic? Right, because we can't. If the, if it's in a food restaurant, if it's at a restaurant now, it's generally kind of organized. But if it's say at tractor supply store, so we so the, so the requirement in the in in the draft is that they would it would essentially go through a site plan process at the staff level. They have to submit, um, you know, a plan of the property where the truck would be, yeah. okay. where where the you know the dry aisles are, that kind of thing. So hopefully, we, that part would be reviewed. We have any idea. How many food trucks oh, yeah. would it would express interest? I mean, I it's it, it's. I mean, I think we would expect that it would be. You know, a, a number, a single digit number. I mean, I, we, we would be shocked if all of a sudden we had interest from twenty two food trucks. I might have missed this, but was there any? Um, express limitation on numbers of days of the week, or what days of the week, or is it any? Anyway. So, so the commission talked a little bit about that, about whether to limit it to, you know, the lunch hours or days of the week or maybe a, uh, there are places that have a, a much more rigid permitting process where you, 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 there are only so many and you could have a permit for this location only, um, you know, on one day of the week. So th that, has, that, has, that is not currently in that draft. So is that something we could recommend if we decided to? I mean, we could say in our we could recommend that. Sure, yeah, if that's we where you were at. Something it. last time that was a lot different. From yes, yes. Yeah. it was. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, this is too loose. Yeah. It's like complete. Well, opposite. that's what Joe was yeah. saying. Yeah, so, I mean, this is the complete opposite yeah. of what we got yeah. Yeah. last time. Yeah. yeah, you know, and even even that generated some discussion, if I if I remember correctly, and you know, but we're like fine. You know, we we approved it, and it it, it went back, and they're like. Um, you know, like I said, now we're taking the whole box apart and just mm -hmm. yeah. opening it up to, you know, okay, not the not the center zone, okay, but you know, there's a lot of other zones around where yep. where these things can happen, yeah. and, um, and to the detriment of to the detriment of established businesses and pay taxes in town. Yeah, and I would I would stay I would stay in 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 that environment on on making your motion, which is you know is is you know, is it consistent with the POCD or not? Does it help businesses or does it hurt businesses? Um, I, I, would, I would just be careful about trying to 
draft the text amendment by, you know, as a zoning commission, which you're not. Right. Just right. Make, no, I agree. Yep. You make yeah. some kind of broad recommendations, but I wouldn't suggest language or specific. I know. I wish. Is there some way we can say what we approved last time? You can. You could. You could make a motion that. Um, I think your motion could be that the uh, that we that we stand by the the, the, recommendation, the recommendation we made on the previous application upon a finding that it was consistent with the POCD, um, and this this expansion we find is not consistent with the POCD because it. For its existing businesses, I mean, business. could, could, could. No, you don't. Know, I mean, we, we don't. That's right. We don't know any. Is there any fee associated with uh, the application? For I mean, there'll be a it'll be a zoning permit fee, a twenty five dollar fee, probably. But the town really doesn't derive any no any, any income. No, not unless they're registered. You know, on, on, on you know the, the, those vehicles are registered in, in the town as a property tax. You know, yeah, a, a vehicle tax. Mm -hmm. No. No, the answer. So it's not really economic development. No. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. I would say. Interesting. I right. agree. Yeah. Does somebody want to take a stab at doing Well, I'll that? take a stab at it because I've been. <laughs> you want to? Uh, you know, I'll draft the wording for this. <clears throat> but, um, so I, uh, I move that um, the Planning Commission. Um, Stands by our original positive referral um, uh, regarding food trucks in town from whatever meeting that was, and I don't I don't know the date. We'll find that. We'll and that, um, that um, this uh, draft text amendment in its its current form is is uh, contrary to um, the language in the POCD regarding. Um, um, business development in town. That. That's a yes. Sound that's decent? appropriate. Okay. Let's check that channel. Every I'll now and then. I'll second you know. it. I'll <laughs> Thank second you. It. Is there any further discussion? All right. All those in favor of. Is there going to be a negative referral? Well, technically, right? I think it ends up being one. Yeah. Yes, it, it is. And that'll, that'll obviously We're, have an impact on their decision we, making. We, we stand by the that's okay. previous positive referral, but yeah, this is negative based on the text amendment. amendment is a negative, a negative referral. Correct. So it will be. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So it, could it be a negative referral with a recommendation to, to uh, um, revert back to the Yes, that, I mean, I that's think that's exactly that's what that's John that's Joe's that's motion that's says. Yep. Okay, good. Okay. Yep. Yep. But good to clarify. Do you need to include that in the wording? I will. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> no, it's all I mean, we will in yeah. my memo, too. All right. So, any more discussion? Okay. All those in favor of actually the negative referral, uh, technically. Well, you're in favor of Joe's motion. Joe's referral. That's right. We're voting yeah. in favor of Joe's motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Um, any opposed? Any abstentions? The motion passes unanimously. Okay. okay, the second item is hopefully a little bit easier. Hey, Joe, can I have that tablet? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Did it die? Yeah, I'm sorry. Lost the... Uh, okay, the second item is a, uh, is a is, is essentially a state mandate. Um, PA 23142, which um, goes into effect on December 1st, made changes to state laws for licensing family and group child care homes. What it essentially said that no zoning regulation can treat any family child care home or group child care home located in a residence and licensed by the state in a manner any different than a single family or multifamily dwelling. So what that really means is for family child care homes, those are in-home daycares of up to six. Group child care homes are in-home daycares from six to 12 children. It means that they are permitted just like any single family use in our community, and they must be treated that way. So the way staff um, and the Zoning Commission are recommending is that we simply made a change to our definition of family 
to include family and group child care homes. And we, we, we thought that that was the easiest and best way to do it. So if, um, uh, if a person wants to operate one and it's in a single family district and it's in a single family home, it's permitted as a matter of right. There's no additional burden or no, uh, no additional um, site plan or special exception or special permit permitted as a burden under, um, under the definition. Got to treat them the same as we treat single family houses. So we, yeah, that's, uh, that's the actual statute. Then, so that's the statute. It's <coughs> a lot of, from on there's not really a lot of choice in this. this is, well, the I choice mean, is so. how we chose to amend, amend the zoning regulations. Thank you. So it's childcare, not a group home. Not no, no. Let's be clear. I just want to be yeah. clear about that. These okay. Are, these are these are licensed state child care, care. facilities. Okay. In homes. Correct. Correct. Okay. Um, and so, I mean, I did, we did do a motion. I mean, it's really that your finding is consistent. It's consistent with state law, um, and TFC <laughs> <laughs> tends to. Need to be consistent state laws. <laughs> like to stay um, within. We, of course, we'd recommend approval. I, I think this is the best way to handle it. Yeah. So I'll make a motion that the planning commission return a positive referral to application ZC number twenty three dash thirty nine, tax amendment to the Simsbury zoning regulations pursuant to section seventeen point four, to update the definition of family in order to comply with state legislation related to family group and family care homes. Is consistent with the plan of conservation and development's support for economic development and the provision of community supporting services. And we said economic development because we think you're, we're removing a burden. Right. right. I will. Um, I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? Right. All those in favor of um, the motion, as stated by Bill, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The vote passes unanimously. Aaron, I just want to ask George a question sure. uh, on that the the previous tax amendment. I'm looking at it now, and I forgot to ask. In the zoning regulations, there's a table. There's a proposed table to add a line item, right? And it, in there, it says, uh, "Okay, the business permitted use one mobile food vendor." in uh, zones B1, 2, 3, and PO, and then it has ZP. What, what does ZP? ZP stands for a zoning permit. So really we have three different, um, three levels of approval. ZP is essentially a staff approval of, okay. a, of a zoning permit. So right above it, I'm looking at, you know, what was included with our package. Uh, it doesn't have ZP as it a... It have ZP. A, that may be a... A quirk of the ordinance, but we'll put that in there. Okay. Going forward, yeah. That's a good point. It's a good question. Sorry to backtrack. Yeah. I suspect that it doesn't in the existing regulations, so we'll, we'll make that change. Uh-oh. I got under the drum box. Oh. Yeah, start so I, I, I do have, a, if anybody wants um, Glenn's handout, I, I did make some extra copies. If, if anybody wants Glenn's handout. You didn't, if you didn't make a copy of it, um, it's in the Dropbox as well, but you wanted a hard copy. It's right here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. oh, it's on. It's all yeah. in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We did that already. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Exactly. <laughs> Welcome back, Glenn. Uh, it's nice to be here. Happy Thanksgiving. Everybody have a good Halloween. Um, so I think um, based on the public hearing, I think we got some great input from the community in terms of thoughts and ideas for the POCD. Um, much as we did from our public informational meeting, I've cataloged and organized these by the different sections of the POCD. Um, I think many of these, I think, enhance the POCD, and I've noted on those. Uh, suggestion to the commission to go ahead and make that change. There are some other comments that were made that either seem to be redundant or actually conflict with what uh, the POCD has recommended based on our conversations. So I noted those as no change. Um, there were some statements that were made. We tried to catalog those, and those end up with sort of gray boxes on the side that really imply that no action is requested or considered appropriate. Um, and then some of them are marked discuss. So I think 
uh, if the commission is comfortable doing so. I hopefully you've had a chance to look through them. We treat it a little bit like a consent agenda, um, and you can go through page by page or section by section. And if you say, you know, hang on a second, I'm I'm not comfortable with comment uh, 17, then let's talk about it. Um, but uh, if these changes uh, or no changes uh, make sense to you. Um, you know, George and I have discussed the approach on this. We think that based on your feedback and input tonight on these comments, we would actually prepare now a version with red lines in it that shows you exactly what went where, um, and then at a future meeting that the commission could now vote on that document. So rather than vote on a list and you haven't seen the final, I think would, George and I feel comfortable. We'd like you to see the final and vote for it. So I do see that there are a number of comments um, originating with staff. So, yeah. George, you had another opportunity with you and others to... Yeah, so those, those are the comments I presented as my comments at the time of the public hearing. And there may, some, there may have been a couple of additional ones we discovered as errors. Yeah, some of it's a clerical, or editorial, editorial yeah, stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah, right. I think George and I went through as we were going through again uh, on these periods. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No issue. Um, so I think uh, on uh, page one is kind of an overview of the format of the memo, which again the commission has seen before. Um, page two uh, talks about the introduction and the preface and the plan summary. Um, we've noted in here where changes are anticipated to the maps to reflect uh, more current or updated data. I think uh, comment number six, um, we've talked about, a comment was made about incorporating the AARP definition of livability and the eight domains associated with it. And I think that's actually a good suggestion because we hide behind the concept of livability, but we don't explain it well. And we've also come up with uh, the information from AARP that they now report livability scores for communities around the country, and Sensory has one. So it actually could go into the POCD, and we could monitor our progress over time and see are we be making ourselves a more livable community or, or not. So that one would actually result in adding two pages to the plan. They'd sort of be facing each other, but we think that that could be an improvement or enhancement in the plan. Um, and then the, I think the other uh, thing on this page to call out, um, the confusion over the definition of equity. Mm -hmm. and what, what, I think that the definitions were muddled, um, and so there was a suggestion that we could uh, use a definition, for example, for, uh, from the National League of Cities, um, but also some graphics here to help people ponder what we mean by um, the concepts of uh, equality, uh, equity, justice, and inequality. I think those are the, the changes that we're suggesting here on page two. Any thoughts or feedback, or is the commission comfortable with us go ahead and making these for your re further review? Good. Page three. I think the pictures are helpful. I do too. Mm. Uh, a number of changes here. Again, this is back in the plan summary section here, just um, clarifying some of the wording, uh, making sure that the formats and stuff are uh, appropriate and consistent throughout the plan. Um, I think uh, George caught a scenario in the plan where we're using different percent, this is comment 18, different percentages for affordable housing. Part of that is because the math changes every year, but also because the census data for 2020 will now be incorporated into next year's <coughs> percentage. So we'd like to have the numbers consistent. We think that's a, a great step forward. We also think it might make sense to report based on what we think the number is going to be next year based on the number of units we have. So now, instead of being at 5% and next year it's going to be down at 4.8 or something else, we're going to report what we think it's going to be, and that could be stable um, as a denominator for the next 10 years. So, again, just consistency, but having uh, a better comparison. We're not really falling backwards on the creation of affordable units, but... The state's math could make it look that way. 
Um, so these are the changes uh, to page three. Um, again, the plan summary section and then conditions and trends. Comments or questions from the commission here? Um, page four, we now start to get into the uh, section of the plan, what we want to protect. We hear all the comments about the federal designation for the Wild and Scenic River um, and uh, adjusting some of the policies and action steps. Um, use of the word ecological and environmental, uh, the name of the Farmington Valley Greenway or FV Greenway in the plain, uh, the correct name is Farmington Canal Heritage Trail. Some comment about the plan talked about open space trails along the ridge lines and there's some concern about the sensitivity of, of that resource area, so uh, make some adjustments there. And again, just some uh, suggested action steps about a master plan for Meadowood, and possible trails uh, in there as well. There was a request to make a map change on the natural resources map, um, but that change would have erased the resources that are actually like the FEMA floodplain on that parcel, and that's. That change is, that's identified here as no change. That was comment number 20. Yeah, so I just got I, I just have a quick question sure. uh, as a clarification. On 35, when we say Meadowwood, that's that last piece of property they bought across from Squadron Line? I think it's the entire assemblage. It goes all the way from... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, that was my question, because I know there's, like, the Barn Doors Hill Triangle. I mean, that was all part of it. Mm -hmm. That was supposed to be that thing, so, okay. So, And there's multiple owners in the Meadowood assemblage, we'll call it. And so the question is to kind of tie it all together. There's the Martin Luther King piece. There's yeah. the state piece. There's the town piece. Right. Um, but there's been discussion about recreation fields or other types of amenities, but the question, in a sense, is... Maybe it would be prudent for the town to put... Yeah, I just want to know where, if we were talking specific pieces of that because it's a much broader. Uh, originally, back in the late night, when the, the, the original proposal was to start with that Barn Door Hills Triangle and just go all the way across. And, and then, you know, there was the settlement and then part of it was bought by the town. And, the Griffin got to keep their part, and then the, then the latest thing was, you know, with TPL and all that. Okay, that, I just needed to clarify. I think all of that, in my mind, is what I think we should mean by Meadowood, that we're not going to tell TPL what to do, we're not going to tell the state sure. what to do on their property, but we'd like to have a comprehensive picture. Right, but the, my question is, that last piece of property that was bought with the help of TPL, Everybody's been calling that metal. But previous to that, there was also the Barn Door Hills Triangle, which fell under a court settlement that I think has a different um, type of um, agreement or, you know, I don't know what to call it, settlement. So I, I just think we need to be careful just to make sure that we're talking. We're talking about that metal piece with TPL. I totally get it. I think one of the things that originally was spoken about was to have a master plan and figure that out. Although... Um, a lot of that land is actually deep, has responsibility for that, because we did that in conservation. Remember, there was, we, we approved something right, right after it was purchased. So a lot of that is actually state property, so. But the POCD also identifies possible uh, mm -hmm. routing of our Northern Loop Trail. Yep. And that uh, takes advantage of the fact that Meadowood is potentially in play, with yep. given, even with the landowners, to create a major connection opportunity yep. here. Um, so getting that into the master plan could sure. be useful. And on the Barn Door Hills Triangle, whatever the restrictions or limitations are, have that be identified and recognized in the master plan could also be useful. Mm -hmm. So I think it's such a tremendous resource. Well, yeah, absolutely. Us, to, to tie it all together. So, some of us fought for that back in the late 90s. Dating yourself, Jeff. Yes, I am. Uh, I was much younger and I probably had more hair at the time. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, that was that was a big battle at the time. So, 
That's all. I mean, there was. Uh, I mean, there's no reason for answering the question. But thank you for the clarification. Uh, any? Are we all okay with page four? Um, on to page five. Again, we're into the uh, community ambiance section. Uh, some very careful reading of the plan identified some uh, numbers which weren't correctly referencing different parcels of land. So we're going to go ahead and correct all of that. So very much appreciate that. Um, there were some uh, arrows on the scenic resources map, which I think they're off by a sixteenth of an inch. <laughs> but realistically, they create a whole different impression than what we meant by that. So just... Again, very observant people who gave us thoughts or ideas here about how to tweak the uh, documentation, et cetera. Supposed to make uh, these changes to the text and to the maps. I would just add at this point, actually, to thank all these people who did take the time to go through. I've been in a few public hearings, and a lot of times they'll, they really go through and they take the map to scale and get out the, you know. Um, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm always impressed by that. You know, because I mean, it's e it's easy to read text and say, "Oh, you missed a comma or a period, whatever, whatever." But like something like that, because I know it's a sixteenth of an inch on the page, but in real life, that means something wholly, wholly different. So mm -hmm. it's always nice when folks show up like that and have taken the time to, you know, I make the other make thing the specific which I, I suggestion. Think is remarkable too is that we've been working on the document for some time, so and particularly for me, I'm I'm putting the words in sort of how I would speak, but mm -hmm. then. Maybe I don't get the word quite right, or the sentence doesn't kind of hang together. People look at it and say, well, hang on a second here, mm -hmm. and have a fresh set of eyes looking it through. I think it's all making the document better. Yeah. Like, don't you think, Bill, that I think people were much more active this time than six, seven years ago? Don't you think they were more active in this process? They definitely had stronger feelings. I don't remember that there was a strong feeling. I mean... Like I've experienced. I remember some of the same people. Yeah. So I think yeah, I think there's a, you know, certain drive in some people to, you know, have the plan reflect what they believe is their vision for the town, which is, you know, the plan is the town's vision. Right. It's the process. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yep. They, they did catch a lot of things. They did. Yeah. I thought they were more active this time. Yeah. Their comments make this a better document. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yep. yeah, agreed. Yeah, I was. I, I think I was a little surprised at the level of um, the detail. Yeah, and the tone, the the tone that I've experienced, I, it just was surprising because I don't remember that happening the last wow. time. But, but it's also different times. But well, um, I think what I found funny was that our efforts to be participatory. We got to the points of requesting and receiving public input, and it was a little aggressive at the beginning in terms of the fact that we hadn't considered some of those viewpoints. And I think that we had, and we were open and welcome. Yeah. But I think, again, as George says, I think we, we made changes to the document based on that input to make it a better document. I agree. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's important. Yeah, I agree. So on page six now, we're into the how we want to grow or development section of the plan. This is the section of the plan about promoting places with a sense of place. Um, again, um, comments uh, here, uh, make change. There's a couple in terms of uh, no change. And that essentially means no change to the section of the plan. For example, there's some comments about bike parking and that that should be repeated in every village setting in the plan. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa hang on a sec. We're, we're going to try to say things once and say it well. And so that comment is reflected later on in the transportation section, but doesn't uh, end up here. Yeah, I, I, Glenn, I appreciate that because, as you know, <laughs> we did the last POCD. I kept saying it's redundant, it's redundant. Mm -hmm. And remember, I mean, it's the same thing. It was all over. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's nice not to have because, you know, I know there was other things that, oh, we want this in every section, and we're like, but well, we've already said it here, here, and here. We don't right. need to keep saying it. And, and I think part of that is for the commission in the future, as you were doing your referrals tonight, to kind of know where in the plan to go to to find the information you need. You may not know what the paragraph exactly is going to say, but you quickly get to the right page or the right section. And to me, I think that makes it a user-friendly document. Yeah. So. Um, so the comments uh, down here, 51 and 52, which relate to discuss, 
um, there is a section of the plan um, on page 78. Um, we talk about the Hot Meadow Street Route 10 corridor. The sentence is, uh, the POCD suggests some different approaches to different roadway segments, but then there really wasn't any detail. So uh, George identified this. We went back and looked at the uh, 2017 plan, um, and there was some wording in there that we think uh, could be uh, uh, inserted into this plan. In comment 52, what we're recommending here is inserting pages 75 and 78 from the 2017 POCD. This identifies the Route 10 corridor as Avon to Weetog, Weetog to the center of town, center of town, through to Hoskins, and then Hoskins North. And each of those components and areas have slightly different approaches. So we reviewed the language there for consistency with the things that the commission has been working on um, <coughs> in the past uh, five or six years or so, um, and we're su suggesting bringing that language over um, with some of the tweaks that are here. So we've identified these as discussed because it's a new concept for you, but we think it's a continuation of that level of detail from the 2017 POCD. Um, so I think I certainly would recommend to make that change. Um, it would enhance the document. Um, it's the commission's uh, thought on those two, comment 51 and 52. So those, I think, what, just to be clear, Glenn, is th those were, those were those, that segment discussion in particular was in the 2017 plan. Mm -hmm. We certainly have talked about that. And, you know, after we got all the poll comments and went and gone through the process, we're like, well, hold on, those, those segments aren't in there anymore. Maybe, maybe they, they probably should be. So we probably shouldn't have taken them out in the first place. Right. Yeah, I think it's just a description from yeah. here to here to here. Yep. That's fine. Yeah. It's like that. I think so. Yep. yep. Do it. Yep. yep. Page seven. We're now starting off with the promote economic development section of the plan. Um, comment 53. Um, the idea here is we have three different entities involved in economic development in town. Um, we talk about those three, but we really didn't explain their functions or purposes or mission statements. So I think the uh, suggestion here is to add those mission statements in for these three entities so people now can, um, who aren't as familiar, grasp the understanding about um, what does the Economic Development Commission do, the Main Street Partnership, um, and the Chamber of Commerce. Clear? Yep. Yep. Um, address housing needs, a number of sort of comments uh, here. Um, some of these we uh, suggest making uh, changes that um, you may recall we had a comment back in an earlier draft of the plan in the open space section about considering the use of town land for open space. That was considered to be threatening to open space. We relocated that to the op uh, housing chapter of the plan, which is where it is today. Um, but the request was for clarification that um, we're not necessarily talking about taking a whole parcel of town owned open space and developing it with housing. There might be components or portions of it. Um, and the wording in that section said provide town owned land. And I think George and I feel that the use of the word partner. The town might have the land partner with Habitat for Humanity and end up with a small project or something like that that, that could work. So provide seem to imply Getting something out. much more significant <laughs> than, than right. that. Yeah. 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 So that's on page seven. On page eight, we had a number of no changes here. Some of these had to do with uh, moving or changing uh, strategies related to affordable housing or uh, perhaps even getting too detailed. So some comments, for example, about determining the composition of the Affordable Housing Committee today. Um, I think that's probably something that's going to result in action by the Board of Selectmen, and I think that they can figure out what, what that could be. The plan doesn't have to spell that out. Um, and I think the concept of diversity is something that they will certainly consider. Um, there were some recommendations in the POCD that used the verb consider, all right? And because these are changes to the zoning commission, we got a new zoning commission coming in. If the change was too strong, 
that, you know, these are things that we would like them to consider and hopefully act on. But if, if we get too strong with the verb, the risk we run is that we just get a cold shoulder reaction. So um, I think the, the thought here, the suggestion is go with a gentle verb to start the dialogue going, and then we'll see how that pans out over time. But if, if the verb is too strong, and I'm an advocate for strong verbs, but I just think that the reaction could be uh, not what we would have hoped. George, for the Affordable Housing Committee, if the, if the Board of Selectmen does get this off the ground next year, they establish who's on the committee? Can we make recommendations? Or is, it, is that just the Board of Selectmen? I think that that process is going um, kind of to, to, to kind of take its own path. Okay. And so that you, you, you may be afforded an opportunity to do that. Okay. You just don't we know just don't, how that, what, okay. what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. Surely the process will be inclusive and... And would you stop calling me Shirley? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so it's still, it's going to unfold, so we don't, okay. Uh, any other thoughts on pages seven or eight? Uh, on page nine, the sustainability chapter, uh, again, some comments here. Uh, having to do with the um, wording of the climate change section and incorporating more thoughts about transportation in the sustainability chapter. I, I think the challenge that we get here is that, and this actually may be a good scenario to have, is that everybody's taking a little ownership of sustainability and they want to try to uh, bring those concepts into the sustainability chapter. Um, but I think the question ends up being um, what and how. So Mark Scully showed up at the public hearing and made some comments, and I chatted with him afterwards uh, in terms of um, strategies and recommendations. I think the key thing that they would like to uh, promote or identify is comments 83 through 85, which is the concept of... Uh, not just talking about sustainability, but on an application, actually having a way to measure it. Maybe they would review it. If somebody comes in with an application, they would go to design review, and design review would give them comments and feedback on the physical appearance, but the systems that are actually embodied in these applications, they would like to have a way over the course of this plan to be involved in those types of things and consider those. So I think how that happens is going to involve some additional conversation as to, you know, is it a referral? Is it a referral just, they can submit reports back, the applicant goes to visit them, et cetera, uh, is something for consideration. Um, and so we've suggested on page 104, adding an action step to seek ways to consider sustainability as part of the review and approval process, zoning, building, et cetera. I'm going to ask this question. So we have this, a similar, con uh, similar discussion on conservation. Is there, if we're going to put language in about sustainability, is there something that would be similar regarding conservation? Because a lot of times um, plans are approved that, um, in, in, in particular, I'm thinking of like the landscape plans um, and ways to make parking lots more, you know, um, environmentally friendly. But certainly the landscape plans where, you know, people are putting in invasives. Um, you know, we'll, we have a lot of you know, stuff yeah. on in this and um, so I know in conservation we've we've talked about that, um, and it'd be nice I think to have language similar to sustainability for conservation in this plan where it makes sense. I think we do have stuff on invasives already in there. Right, but I mean, as far as as far as a this this type of review, the sustainability is looking for. Mm -hmm. And I think that's going to be a charter review issue. I don't think that's going to be something the POCD. Yeah, it's got to come out of the ultimately well, the, the zoning ordinance has got to dictate right. that process. Well, you know, if if sustainability is going to get something, and they're like, oh, we should put solar panels on this, I would think the conservation should have you know the same. I don't I don't want to say courtesy, but but you know availability to to look at something and and offer comment. But I think it's only saying it's an action step right, to consider. Right. I mean, as that, part that's what I'm saying is something similar to this action step that would do something like that for conservation as far as 
you know, landscape plants and things like that. Because a lot of times we get things, we look at them and, you Do, know. Don't we have that already about invasive? I thought we had a so lot. We added the invasive stuff. I mean, I, I, think, I think what we, Joe we is. Did. That's Joe. not my point. Oh. No, Selena is not. I'm, I'm sorry. To no, jump, you, you can make your own point. point. My point is that we want to add this action step in here, which I brought my glass. I agree. Step to seek ways to consider sustainability as part of the review and approval process, zoning, building, et cetera. And I would say that something similar to that as an action step would be seek ways to consider um, okay. conservation as part of the review and approval process. Basically the same wording, but in a different place where it would make sense to do for conservation. So that then that is in as an action item as well. Section. So it's just a thought. No, no, I'm not disagreeing with your thought. I understand the scenario of the process here. I'm just wondering is that if there was an application came in, it gets circulated to different staff agencies for their review and comment, engineering, police, fire, etc. The comments are then submitted on a timely basis so that the application process unfolds. I was envisioning a similar process for the sustainability committee. They, they don't get to sit around for 30 days. We've got statutory time frames and everything else that's going on. But the issue could be a referral to conservation. Now, conservation also has regulatory authority. Right. So you can't, I, I'm not admonishing, right? But the issue is you, you can't mix the two. I understand well, that. I didn't say inland wetlands. No, I, I know. conservation. No, I understand. I we don't it's the same group and entity. So, in other words, as long stay in the lane, but would, would, would you be comfortable with the concept of a referral of an application that you could then submit reports either to planning right. or zoning? Yeah, that's, I think that's exactly yeah, that's, what he's saying. That's exactly I mean, what I'm talking about. Exactly, exactly what been, he's asking Since for. I've been on conservation, and I know George is sick of hearing from me on this, I've been talking about making conservation-like design review. So, you know, I sat on zone. And somebody wants to build something here. They want to paint a door, I don't know, fluorescent orange <laughs> in the middle of downtown. And then that goes to design review. And they're like, oh, I'm sorry. We only have four colors you can choose from. So we don't, we don't think that that's appropriate, that we have a fluorescent orange front door on, you know, your whatever. food truck. <laughs> we already said no to that, Bill. <laughs> so, um, right, on your food truck. So, um, you know, and then that goes back to zoning, and then, you know, they consider. Now, there were times on zoning where we said, that's not a fluorescent door, but something that they had a stick, sticky thing about. We were like, you know what, it, 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 it's fine. And then there were other times where um, we didn't even think about it, and then design review would say, well, you know, we have trouble with this because, you know, it's up late. It needs to be down like you know, the sconces are wrong. We're like, yeah, you know what? We would say to the person, this is a problem. You need to come in and you need to fix it. So all I am saying is that for conservation, very much like this action step here, except I would find a place where it would go to be appropriate for conservation. That's all I'm saying. So I'm not, I, I get it. You know, if it's in the wetlands, that, that's the, you know, where the state regulatory arm here on the local basis. I totally got that. But there's also the conservation side, which we would we would do that. I know we've we've talked about it quite a bit. Um, so so that's that's my comment. So you're talking above and beyond what you would already review. That would have to go to you regulatory. What I'm saying is I'm looking for this action step to be placed in the POCD somewhere that would not be basically the same wording except instead of sustainability, it would say conservation. I, I think we can find a place for that. I think yeah. the idea is, this is again where the verb is, seek ways to consider. Exactly. Yes. Right, right. Exactly. Right. But I would like it in there so that, you know, then, then it's an action step and it, it's something that we can measure and see how we do with it and, you know. The comments would come back to the uh, no. commission with jurisdiction or whatever and then it could be, yep. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Okay. Thank you all. I appreciate Thank you. It. Is there a good definition of sustainability? <laughs> there is a UN. Yeah, yeah, there is. Yeah, yeah there is. Yeah, there's some some standard to to measure an application by. Well, that's kind of different. Nah, that's. Well, it, that's the, what I would say. This maybe, is that's what a little Mark bit harder. Scully, it's what Mark Scully's asking. I know it's harder. That's a harder ask. 
So you know, we're on a trajectory with the concept of sustainability. The UN definition, which is sort of widely accepted, is revolves around the concept of making choices in this generation that don't adversely affect the resources and impacts on future generations. So the concept of sustainability involves trying to find a balance longitudinally over time. That's, that's the, the basic premise of the UN definition. But the standards are all over the place in terms of... You know, at one point in time, we had LEED certification for mm -hmm. buildings. Mm -hmm. It's still no, there. It doesn't yeah. But, you know, there's other standards also related to building construction, and those have tended to not be stable. They change over time. Um, but what should those standards be? And I think those issues are still being worked out. So I think the issue is... You know, Simsbury's got a, a bad enough reputation with developers as far as how hard it is <laughs> to put an application yeah. through the process. Mm -hmm. This is adding another step, and to me, it's adding an ambiguous step, uh, with you know no clearly defined measures to to assess or uh, an application. I, I I like the idea behind it. I like the you know, the concept. I'm just not sure that there's uh, a way to do it, and uh, at least reliably and repeatedly. I think the issue could be one that. Um, reports might come in from conservation, from sustainability, in terms of, say, on the case of sustainability, somebody's proposing to use oil heat systems. Well, nowadays, when, when I was brought up, electric heat was like, are you kidding me? That's ridiculously expensive. And it's why would you, you know, because they were using resistance heating at the time. It was tremendously inefficient. But nowadays, with heat pumps basically circulating things out of the ground, it can be less expensive in the long run, maybe a little bit more at the beginning. So the comments might come in to say to the zoning commission, the applicant might consider the use of, you know, electric heat pumps. What do you, what yeah, does zoning do with that? I, mean, I don't the, know that they require it, but. The, 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 I mean, the hardest part is what Bill's pointing out, which is yeah. the action step and, 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 and you as well, the action step is to seek ways. We don't know what those ways are. are yeah. That's the issue. We have, that's a process in itself to try to determine what those ways are. Uh, so it's broad and it's, I understand your point. No, I don't object to it. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay. just, you know. Yeah, but how do you, yeah. 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 How do you put it into practice? Right. I don't know how to do that. That's yet. a good question. Well, that would be part of our wouldn't it be part of our whatever? It would be a part of um, some, you know, whoever would be assigned that implementation item. Um, ultimately, it's going to have to be in the zoning reg or the subdivision regs. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, if, if you're dealing with the subdivision and you wanted that review, you would have part of your process would say, the Conservation Commission would review it, would review these elements and provide a referral back. That, that language would have to be in, a, in your subdivision regs as a requirement, essentially, of the process. But to your point, you're saying it adds another layer. It does. Right. Yeah. Which isn't front layer. Yeah. Well, I think design review, an applicant is essentially required to go to design review to justify their plan. It's simply, it could be a case that an application comes into George, George refers it to conservation and refers it to sustainability. It says the meeting where this is coming up is no, November 30th, whatever it would be. And you know, you receive your comments by then? Right. Yeah. Applicant doesn't have to go to the meeting. Right. right. Positive report would always benefit their project, mm -hmm. but they don't have to. So in other words, it's going to happen within the time frame that exists under the statute, the procedures and time. Some George is getting about. nervous here. <laughs> exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, the, the details, sir. The so we'll have to work out details. Yeah. yeah. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, there would have to be an expectation. Yeah. A, the, the deciding body, the planning commission or the zoning commission, the deciding body on an application would have to endorse or, or just be prepared to accept the referral. I can't, you know, it would be, it would be terrible for me to show up with an application here in the planning commission and be like, George, why did you send us to sustainability? We, we don't want to hear from them. Well, it would have to be, you know, it would have to be endorsed as part of your process. Same thing for Conservation Commission and Zoning. Would have to would have to be an expectation of the process. Yeah, we refer these site plans to the Conservation Commission to review the landscape plans and other environmental elements. But again, the deciding body has got to be in that conversation. Yeah. 
you know, it, it, like, like I said, it's almost, I think it's going to come down to a charter review type situation. Because I think design review was yeah, but, that way. I think, I think it was through the charter review. Good. I mean, if I remember correctly, that wasn't what I was talking about. So anyway. the language right now is seek ways to consider. Is that, is the, that the right wording? Seek ways to introduce? Seek ways okay is... Are we okay with I, uh, I seek ways to consider? Okay. I, I think it's fine the way it is, yeah. Yeah. Um, can I just ask on 78? What? Po what? Going back. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, it says merge policy F and policy C. And yeah, F. so uh, pagination was an issue on some of these pages in terms of making sure we're going to have enough space to get the comments in. Oh, okay. So I think 70, uh, not 70. 104. Yeah. I'm sorry, page 104. It's yeah. comment 78. But. Yeah. So F is discourage the expansion of residential natural gas heating in town, and C is encourage all new buildings to be highly energy efficient. So they're really two sides of the same coin. Yeah. And so why did we need to sort of say it twice? It almost seemed a little bit redundant. So yeah. the issue okay. uh, on this page, we felt that F could be merged with C, C. In, in a way, yep. and then this would give us space to yep. get this comment. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. I think the uh, page 10 is now no change. Part of this had to do with... Yeah, an energy use dashboard, almost in real time, that you would go to, it just seemed too detailed for the POCD, and the other one was hiring an energy manager, <coughs> not the sustainability manager, or sustainability coordinator, and again, it just seems sort of yeah, it's beyond. You know, too detailed. I thought it was beyond, yeah. That brings us into the uh, section of the plan about what we want to provide, uh, I think in terms of uh, community facilities. Um, some of this had to do with comments uh, related to um, issues at the schools, and it was really an issue related to um, concern or opposition to affordable housing or higher density housing. A comment related to uh, standards for air fil filtration, air turnover in school buildings, um, and then the comment about Town Forest Pond. Uh, being dredging and all three of those just seemed a little bit sort of off key and kind of specific so I mo noted those as sort of uh, no change. There were a number of comments that came in on transportation. Before we go to transportation, uh, comment 93, yep. adding the community garden. Yes. Is there any way to add the Grange on um, there was buildings resource, it was a blue box and it had buildings in town. Is it on a map or is it on a... It's... Let me see if I can find it. It's on that list of... It was... It's a blue box. Um, oh, well, this is with the back. numbers, I yeah, think. You're, no, you're back. Yeah. I don't remember where it was. A ratio. I know. It, 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 well, it could either be... It, 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 49 or 50. All right. Let me see. It's 49 or 50, Aaron. I think that's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, probably. Well, I'm looking at the old. I mean, I must not be. 49 and 50 is maps. Um, let me see. <laughs> okay. I'll find it. I don't want to hold up. But it was a, it was a blue box on... Well, I think you're thinking... Uh, well, the Grange is both historic. Yeah, I can't find it now. I didn't put the page number. When so I community there. facility, Aaron, is often sort of focused on municipal facilities. But this didn't. It had um, the ones that were listed. I'll find it. Well, I think it, it, I think my yeah. sense is you're going to be in the uh, ambiance character section of the plan, so you're going to be around page 46. 47. Those are the two. Those are the two, two big block, blue blue boxes. Oh yeah, on page 45. Yeah. So 45. Aesthetic places. I think I want more. 
I don't, I mean, I was just, because it is, it's all, you know. Yeah. That's our fourth time. All right, so you can add a number in a, into the map if possible. Or I was just thinking to the blue box. Oh. So, you know, where, like, for aesthetic places or could you fit it in? I don't know. If not, not a big deal. Make it 38? You could. Okay. Somehow. So what was your what what comment number does that come from? Just well, I was just um, ninety three when she it, it, she mentions the community gardens. I was like, oh, it just oh, yeah. got me thinking about okay. the Grange and that on um, what was forty five. Yeah. You know, and So back to page 11 of the report here. So I think that takes care of community facilities. Transportation, a number of comments that came in from the bike path committee um, in terms of uh, particular wording related to pedestrian issues, bicycle issues, um, and other uh, suggested changes or modifications to the plan. I think a couple of comments that came in that I brought, wanted to bring to your attention is comment, for example, 98. And this is in the POCD. There are two suggestions that were in the 2017 POCD carry forward, and these are sort of future road connections. There's a couple of ways that a POCD is more than an advisory document. Generally, it's advisory, but the issue would be road connections. If the POCD shows a road connection, you can require it be set aside as part of the development of the property. The other area is that if you show an area for a green belt or open space preservation and a subdivision or something else comes in, you can require that the open space be in the Brook Corridor or something else or a ridge line where you've identified it in the POC. So rather than let these road connections continue on because we didn't talk about them, I just thought it made sense to, to bring them up. So there is a map on page 113, the vehicular circulation plan. <coughs> we'll just bring it up so we all. Okay. to sign my plan every time I look at the plan. <laughs> That's Joe. I'm a, I'm I want royalties. Where? Oh, wait, it's you? You're on the cover? I'm on the POCD cover. I was down at the flower picture of my bag. Okay, here's me in the hand. Oh, yeah. Hey, Clyde. So I'm going to get royalties from this, uh, from all the copies that are blowing out. That's awesome. Where are you? In here? Yeah. That's me right there. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Yeah. We, had a, we had a concert we gave here. Nice. Glenn came down and took pictures, so that's, that's my band. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm a group. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It comes to all my gigs. <laughs> well, you got to start telling me when they are. Yeah, well, well if I had any more, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so there were two road connections shown in here. The first one, which went back, you know, it could have been 2007 or 2017, is the concept of connecting Walcott Road over to Hoskins County. This now goes through the area where the solar fields have been built. Um, I understand that the town has a right at the end of the lease term to acquire the property for a dollar. Uh, they may keep the solar collectors up or they may do something with it, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be developed as much in the future. The basic idea on this original discussion years ago was all the traffic comes out and starts making these turns on that section of Hot Meadow Street when all they're really trying to do is to get out to sort of western Simsbury. Mm -hmm. So this connection from Walcott through um, could be a possibility. It really is all the way to Hot Meadow, actually. Yeah. 
But yeah, I mean, Walcott Road comes comes into. Oh, Hot I'm Hot sorry, at Walcott at Hot Meadow. Yeah. Right, Got, right, 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 right. And then uh, when the development, I'm drawing a blank on the Giorgio development there at the corner. What was it called? Uh, Dorset. Dorset, Dorset Crossing. Dorset Crossing, whatever. Right. They, there was right of way that was left in a portion of the road that was built. But do we carry this forward, or do we recognize that circumstances have changed? Is this something that could be beneficial 40 or 50 years from now? Should circumstances change, or it's probably not likely to happen and move it to a sidebar? What are your thoughts on, on that road connection? It's in there now. It's in the draft. It has been. Then it has well, been. Yeah, previous. Right. Yeah. right. Would it get lost if we took it out? You know, I don't know. Well, I think there might be space to put a sidebar. Now, this doesn't have to show on the map. Okay. But should opportunities arise in the future, this connection could be desirable, something like that. Okay. And then the second one was down here. The question was, Iron Horse was built as a sort of pressure relief road to Ottawa Street. Um, it's evolved kind of differently, and, and people, can, and there were comments from the Bike Ped Committee about um, why would you want to have a connection from Hot Meadow Street through the EB complex to connect in? And the thought process was, again, 10 or 20 years ago, that at some time, EB has facilities all over the country that may not necessarily be here. The site might get reused. It could be a lot of things that could happen. But right now, all of the traffic is basically coming into the intersection of West Street, Drake Hill, which is offset. So as a result, the intersection doesn't always work effectively. But actually having an opportunity to get through the site to continue up would actually distribute traffic a little bit, might address some of that issue. It's, we're, not, we're not making any comments here about EB Aerospace or anybody else, but should something happen with that site, it might be worthy of consideration. Again, some of the comments might be, but that's going to put more traffic on what's essentially mostly being used today as a recreational route. And we do have a trail and things along there. Um, but I felt that, that comment, it, it made sense to come back to the commission and ask for your thoughts um, about those two elements of the plan. They end up in the transportation drawing and they end up in the future land use plan. Hmm. So they're not, and again, they're not, they're not new comments. They've been in your plan for, for a while. Right. Um, My gut feel it, says leave it in for now. So leave them both in? Yeah. Or? I don't think the northern one will ever be built, but it's yeah. pretty far reaching. But you, what, what if I what if what if I suggested this? What if you left them in, and then had an action step that says review you know, feasibility yeah. feasibility of those two future. And, and who would do that? Like the engineering department? No, I think it, it's a planning and kind of a shared planning engineering function. That makes sense. Yeah. I like that. I think that's a reasonable. Like that. Stuart, yeah. All yeah. right. In the next POCD. <laughs> when we're all still on planning. Now on page 12, I think there's some comments here on the map in terms of the location of some intermediate bus stops that, yeah. honestly, I didn't even know were there. Um, so uh, good comments and good, uh, George, thank you for your help with this. Um, making some changes uh, to some of the maps um, in terms of uh, public transit. Question was, will the incorporation of the 2018 uh, pedestrian and bicycle master plan into the POCD apply to future updates? I, I think that Anytime there's future updates, I would urge the commission to review it and consider it included at that time, mm -hmm. rather than just blanket pave the way for something that might come around in the future. Any comments, questions on page 12? Does that 
I see the comment um, 105. Yep. And I guess it's related to 104 with shading. Yep. Um, what what is that? So right now, um, on the um, vehicular plan, for example, we have on the bus route a quarter mile is considered to be a, a distance that somebody might walk to a commuter bus or a so that's that bus. pinkish the pink yes yeah. sir. And so the question was, okay, well people might bicycle a mile or two miles. Why don't you put another shade on? That? And this was also part of a comment to separate out the vehicular map on the road colors from the transit map. George and I had talked about this. We didn't think we needed sort of two maps. And we felt that adding these in was um, you know, going to start to muddle the message in the map. Mm. So I think, um, yes, could people bicycle to the bus? They could. There's no real bike facilities there today. That might be something the bike ped committee could take care of in terms of their work and their recommendation, but it didn't need to be in the POC. Data. That was some of our, our kind of you know, sidebar conversation about a, a number of these comments, that we have a bike and pedestrian master plan that we've incorporated by reference in, your, in, in the POC document. Yep. So we didn't think it, it, it was that necessary or even, you know, that added that much value to re-add those, you know, what, some of the same items that are in the bike and bed plan. Uh, page 13, again, some uh, tweaks to some of the maps, uh, the walking plan, the biking plan, uh, and then some other minor uh, comments here about uh, bike racks, for example, um, sustainability and tying those in together. So I think these are ones also on page 14 who have identified uh, some of these as uh, kind of make these changes. Is the commission okay with Yep. Yep. So that brings us to page 15, which is the future land use plan. I think um, George and I have had conversations uh, about uh, ways to improve the future land use plan. Uh, in past POCDs, it's often been um, an extension of the current zoning map, right. which seems to imply no change. And I think what George has suggested here is to take uh, sort of more positive action steps to reflect um, what our thoughts and visions are for these different areas. And so that would be reflected in the map in a couple of different ways. Um, comment 126 is really the area uh, north of the Wagner site uh, mm -hmm. on Hop Meadow Street, um, across from, uh, well, back behind the sort of the skating center. Mm -hmm. The current designation there has been industrial for quite some time, and that's really not what we think our current vision is for today. Um, so to retitle that uh, on this map as other business, um, and you might also uh, suggest the concept of a more mixed-use style of development. So that, that's illustrating the, the difference between the zoning map and the future mm -hmm. land use. Plan. Exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not tagging a specific zoning you know, zone designation to it. Exactly. Right. It should it 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 should it shouldn't mirror the zoning regulations unless you want that land use. Uh, we identified this spot. This is that. This is the seventy five acres north. You know, between Dorset Crossing and I think our, our recommendation. What everything we've heard is that it's it's, it's going to develop, the market wants it to be a more mixed use retail and other kinds of things. It's, it's our last big piece on Hot Metal Week. Do we want industrial there? That's that's the question. That's a rhetorical. And so we would recommend no. That, that we, so so by changing the land use map, it allows for support for other kinds of mixed use development and other business development. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We good? Yep. yep. Comment one twenty seven is the land area which is south of the Hartford Insurance site on Hot Meadow Street. So in the middle of this. Uh, Area is the Agway site, the trail crossing next to the Agway, et cetera, um, and then uh, the land which continues along there. Um, again, this this is one which is showing up as industrial again. We think that other business uh, uh, is a, a better designation for this. Um, and the highlighted text here, which actually should also apply to comment 126, also up above, 
is to take these map changes back to the economic development plan, which is where the concept of industrial starts and actually identified on those maps as other business or other uses, et cetera. Yeah, if we make the change once, we've got to make it on a couple yep. of maps. Yes. That's, yes. that's what yep. we're saying. Um, is that good? Yeah. Yep. yep. Next page, comment 128. There was a comment from a gentleman back at the he had public information meeting in May. A gentleman, uh, somewhere along the way, his parcel, which is on Terry's Plain Road, had been identified as open space. And so we carried through a bunch of the maps. And he said, whoa, I, you know, I got a house on it. It's not open space. And we nailed them. We fixed them all except one, which is the future land use plan. So he caught it again, or George did, and we're going we're gonna to fix it again. So that's pretty straightforward, I think. Um, just again, kind of some other map changes. Uh, comment 132, I think we already talked about, yep. so I don't have to talk about that one anymore. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, and just a couple of minor tweaks here in terms of the implementation section. Comment was made that, uh, hey, this five-year update is really pretty cool. Let's keep doing this. And I think the world can change a lot in five years, but I don't know that the plan should dictate when it has to be updated. It's the commission can decide as it did this time. Maybe it's time to revisit. So, uh, well, no change here. I not, agree. not to put that in and, and let the commission decide. Um, I know. I, I explained to several people, we, we can update it any time within the 10 years. Um, yeah. I know somebody had wanted to not even approve this plan until the Board of Selectmen was, you know, yeah. a year. And I was right. like, that's yeah. just not, no, <laughs> this has been going on a year. So, um, yeah, I agree. And I think that's sort of what ended up here on pages 17 and 18, which is sort of other comments, which was, um, you know, people were saying, geez, I, did, I didn't know this plan was underway, but in fact, they've been participating from the public meeting back in January all, all the way through. So... Um, I think uh, some of these comments related to the process um, and uh, asking so, that it I got a question for the commissioners. Did, yeah, uh, on that subject, it's almost like I, I can't remember who it was, if it was uh, Sue Messino or somebody else, but they were almost intimating that we were doing this mm -hmm. all behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Now, certainly, that has not been our approach. Um, did, did anyone else feel that that same way? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I okay. sure did. I, I found it very, to me personally, very upsetting. You know, we sat through, we had that public information thing where we did our, you know, our Exercise likes and dislikes. It started with a survey where you had over 700. Listen to everybody's comments. And then we had the, the first public meeting. These meetings are public. We're on SCTV. Or, yeah. You know, I mean, to me, that was... Um, I, yeah, I, thought, that I thought we kind of baffling. went the extra mile. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Due 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 absolutely due diligence, right. for sure. But yeah. not, I, I think, um, if I can, in conversations that I had, I think one thing that I, I'm not sure was articulated um, maybe well, whatever, was the fact that um, there was no place to really find out how to make comments, who to send comments to, or a deadline. And, you know, it, it was, I mean, is it something to think about in the future, put on the, when we post it to say, please send your comments? I mean, so I think that was one of the issues that I don't think that that came across, um, but I think that was, it definitely was one of the main issues um, expressed. Which is interesting. And, and, and which was, an, you know, it, it's, everyone's got, you know. We, scheduled, we were working it through the spring on the plan and its contents and the direction. And we got to a point where we said we need to share this with the community. So we gave them the date for their public input meeting. It was May or June, I think, in terms of input. Right. Mm -hmm. And asked, that was the day for people to provide input. And we actually gave them, I think, another week or 10 days after that to get written comments in. And then we... Incorporated, I'd say the vast majority of those comments Absolutely. into the plan and said, okay, we're now headed for public hearing and here's the date and we welcome your comments. So I think. Yeah, I don't just, I'm just saying this is in conversations that I've had. That was what is that it wasn't clear. It wasn't posted whether or not we agree, but that was, I think that's one of the concepts that, um, that was trying to be expressed that, and, and, you know, 
So. Pretty, yeah, according to the minutes um, from that meeting, there's a woman named Diane Nash that made the comment. Uh, she also wanted more public hearings on it. Um, that might have been, Bill, what you were thinking. Because I remember a comment like that. I thought, really? But I was trying to figure out from the, the minutes here. There was another couple who all said similar things. Yeah. I don't. Right. Well, I, just, I, I just want to go on the record yeah. Yeah. that we have tried to be very open with the process. And there, there was uh, no no intent on our part to, to hide any of what right. was going on. I agree. Well, I agree with you 100%, Bill. Thank you. Does it mean that we can't improve? You know, I'm, Correct. Okay. I'm, I'm, right. I'm with you on that, too. Yep. But I, I agree. I think we spent a lot, and this, I've said this, we spent a lot more time than we originally planned to mm -hmm. when we decided to do this. Glenn spent a ton more time. Um, so, um, yeah, and I guess that's what I was referring to in the beginning, that just the level of, you know, um, it's great that there was so many comments, but, but well, I, it's hard to describe. But anyway, I, I was just surprised at some of the yep. um, level of emotion, I guess. Yep. Um, and certainly in different people talking to me, even after the public hearing, I was, um, when I was trying to go up and give information. So, um, though I'm happy to see so many people there and taking part in. Um, well, it was so. also hard on the heels of the vessel. Yeah, that's right. There was, well, and exactly. There was just, <laughs> so, there's uh, a lot going on. So a there's a lot more energy. That. Exactly. Uh, exactly. We, and I think that's the last show. I think you're absolutely, absolutely. right. Yeah. So yeah. so the commission's next meeting is technically you meet on um, November twenty eighth, and then uh, the next meeting after that would be December twelve. Twelve. Twenty sixth, not the twenty eighth. Yep. No, today's the fourteenth. I'm sorry, that's that's right. the twenty eighth. We'll get it next year. Next sorry. year, hang on. We'll get to that. <laughs> All right, I guess we're gonna wait. <laughs> that's cool, man. So that's the question. So you need to meet on the twenty eighth or December twelfth. Twelve. So I think what I'd like to try to do, if the commission is okay with this concept, uh, is there a chance that the meeting on the 20th is going to be canceled? Or do you think you're... I have no idea. What I'd like to try to do, if the commission is comfortable with this concept, is try to make these changes in red line, get them to you early next week, Apologize that you'll have it over the Thanksgiving holiday type of thing, but it'll be a red line version reflecting what we've talked about here. So I think if you can just we go through lines. it and look at the red line version, um, what I might suggest is the commission could be in a position at your meeting on the 28th to vote if you're comfortable to adopt the plan. We can set the effective date for you know New Year's Eve or, or sometime January 1, 24, or something else like that, or if the commission feels that, you know, give us another two weeks and set the effective date for sometime in January or something like that. Um, I think that that could be a, a reasonable schedule moving forward. Yeah. Yeah. As long yeah. as your work is done, we can have it for the 28th and yeah. be ready. So I have, I have seen some reference to the plan as being the 2022-2023. Yeah. So we, 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 we talked, talked about, about that. We, we're going to uh, cover it right now says 2020. Um, two to 30, uh, th 23 to 33. And I think it, what we propose to do is get the 10 year number off of there, mm -hmm. right? We're yeah. not going to name it the, because if the commission decided to update it in five years, whatever. So we just call it the 2024 POCD. Mm -hmm. Or if you want a quick a Christmas day, we can do 2023, 20, whatever you would like. And we'll, we'll give it a, a, the, an effective date that you decide on. So it would yeah. be the 2024 plan yeah. effective yeah. Jan 1, January, 2021, January, 2021, whatever the date that makes sense. That's what yeah, we would do. That makes sense. Okay. Yep. Yep. Historically, what date have you given it? Is it the date in which the, the work has been, or sorry, the year in which the work has been done? The 2017 one was, or well, is it? By statute, we had to have it done by a certain date, didn't we? We had to have it. See, we're not statutorily, but I think back in 2017, we had because to it's a five year. So you can give it any date. You any want. date you, you want. Give, yeah. give it an effective date. The date it's adopted. The date it's adopted. Um, yeah. Can, we, we have a, but I think a, we a had to give it usually, by so, a certain uh, date right. last time because statutorily, if I remember correctly. Oh, yeah. So I mean, the, the the real, I guess, implication of the ten year deadline is that should the town miss the ten year date. 
of your original adoption. Uh, then for a period of time, the town's ineligible for state discretionary grants, and you have to go through an exception process to be considered. So there's an advantage, if you will, to, to make that happen, um, but the state doesn't enforce it or monitor it. They're somewhat uh, casual about it. Um, so I think uh, somebody's planning on applying for a municipal grant between uh, you know, Christmas and New Year's or whatever. But as George points out, we're, we're in a five-year update, right? So we've really got till 2027, so we can pick any date we want it. Yep. So what's our position on public comments? Is it closed now? It mm -hmm. is. Yeah, yeah, it was, closed. was closed at, uh, at that yeah, hearing. Yeah, it's, it's Great. Yeah. Finish line in sight. Finish line in sight, yeah. and I hope to see you in two weeks. All right. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. Thank you. Thank you, George. And all lots going on behind the uh, the scenes. Appreciate it. Your last item is uh, the approval of the 2024 calendar. Didn't we talk about meeting at 6 o'clock? I think you, we've had conversations as a group. Um, that's going to be up to you. To yeah, you. What do people think? I know we had talked about that, and we couldn't change it. You couldn't change it mid-year, year, but, but now would be the time now to change would be the time to do it. anything. I don't, yeah, right. Correct. Well, that's 6.30. Only because 6 is kind of, you know, work and then eating and I don't know. But. Yeah, no, I probably would come straight from work myself. Cause, okay. um, I come from the community, but, um, but I know we had talked about that. What do people think about 6, 6.30 or 7.00? My schedule is fine. Like, I can do whatever on Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. So, 6 or 7 is fine. So, whatever works for you all. No, I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't want to change. Is, is, is this permanent? Or are you talking about permanent? Well, for the next year. Yeah, you'd make it for the next year. Yeah, yeah. 6 30 at the earliest for me. Okay. Okay. And I'd keep it at 7 then. You would keep it at 7? Yeah, yeah okay. I wouldn't want to jeopardize a, yeah. a, a quarrel. Like, because yeah, of, I would. Yeah. And if it's, yeah. if it's a little unknown, if everybody was like, yeah. <laughs> okay. Then I would keep it at 7. Okay. Uh, there are no other, there's nothing, there's no curveballs built in um, into this. There's no, the only, the only, the only holiday that, that falls on is Christmas Eve, so you wouldn't have a meeting. And it has been your habit of scheduling it, at least on the approval of the calendar, your, the August dates. Other commissions do not do that. A zoning commission has asterisks on those dates, so they don't even schedule the the, the August dates. Neither does um, neither does the conservation commissioner. Or D, or, no, design review doesn't schedule them either. But right. so what we did this year, I don't think we met. We met on one of them and canceled the other. So again, I just bring that to your attention. Other there are other there are other groups that don't even schedule. Yeah, historically. We wouldn't schedule for the first one. One of them, yeah, one I can't remember. I think it was the first the one because usually by this time kids were back in school and people were in town. So, so we could do that if the, if that's if that's your pleasure to to simply put an asterisk there and yeah. say no meeting on the we 13th. Would put, I think just yeah. strike that asterisk now. Yeah, I mean, and I think you're right, George. I don't think we met no, no, no. anyway. Exactly. So. I, I'd be in favor of putting an answer. I don't think I'd want to cancel both of them. Just uh, you know, yeah, but I think that's fine. So I'll, I'll make the motion that we adopt the um, proposed uh, the proposed regular meeting dates for year twenty twenty four with the agreed upon change um, of uh, deleting the August thirteenth date. I mean, that's my motion, is that we just approve the calendar as amended. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Abstentions. All right. Awesome. All right. All right. So, any other business, George? Any other? Nothing? Okay. All right. Uh, just a Go ahead. question. Uh, I'll pose it to George. Um, I saw... I think on Zillow that 318 A and B Bushy Hill are for sale for house lots. Is that uh, okay? I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Where's it near? Uh, by the fire station, Bushy Hill Fire Station. Oh, by Canton. Mm. 
I can't run. Yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, not by can't. No, no, I can't I know, I mean, it's kind of wet, right? Is that that? Oh, uh, that's the. It's like a flag lot. Okay. I, I had heard there may have been another application being considered for there. So um, I haven't seen anything yet. Well, say that three eighteen and three eighteen. Uh, it looks like it's been either. This oh, is what's got me. I'm very confused because we didn't see a subdivision application. We didn't either. So there's lots 318 <laughs> within his existing house. Yep. And then 318A and 318B. Okay. With two proposed homes. I'll look into it. I thought that was the 8-30G lot, George. Oh. To my knowledge. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up tomorrow. And you said it's across from the... In that area, in down that by area. Bush Hill. Okay. Anyway, I know exactly what you're talking, I, but I don't know what it is. I haven't heard. Nothing has been in the office. Okay. The That's right. Some, something looks unusual. Okay. okay. Mm. Interesting. Okay. I'll, I'll look it up. Look. It's a big open open lot. Yeah. Mm. No, it's not. There's room to have right, a yeah. house on it right now. Okay. Mm. To go take a look. All right. So without objection, I'm going to close the hearing at 847. All righty.